Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, thanks so much for watching the some of the previous reviews that I have done. On uh, I, I've unfortunately only have a handful of uh, of premium Bibles to review, so I can only review the ones that I have. I just can't afford to uh, to to buy all the super cool Bibles that are out there. But somebody asked for a like a one year uh, crash test review. Let's see, September. So actually this is, we're coming up on a two year crash test review. I got this September 20th of 2017. Um, we are right now in July. So we're going to call this a two year crash test review of the Cambridge English standard version pit minion. So this is their smaller one. Um, I, I love this Bible. <laughs> throughout this last two years, I was not sold on, on getting it. Uh, I'll be honest with you. When I, my very first premium Bible that I got was this, this is the Bible that's, this is its big brother. This is the uh, Cambridge ESV wide margin. So I bought this, I did a bunch of reviews. I didn't even know that the pit minion existed and I bought the wide margin. I, I love this. It, it lives at my house. Um, it very rarely leaves the house. I'll be honest with you. It, it stays on my desk here and I study it and write in it and I have some codes. There's, I think I have a video on that. Um, but then I kind of found out about this through watching a couple guys on the net out there and thought I need to have one of those. So I got one. So, um, this is the black goat skin edition of the Cambridge ESV pit minion. Uh, and again, I love this. Uh, you can, I don't know if you can tell by the video, but it almost looks brand new. It does not feel brand new anymore, which I appreciate, but it, it looks darn near brand new. Um, and the reason why that might mean something to you, it means something to me, is because I, I have had this for just about two years. It goes quite literally everywhere that I go. Um, it, it usually gets carried in a backpack. I, I have like a 5.11 tactical backpack that I carry a bunch of garbage in, so it's not all by itself. And I just stick it in there in between books and, and it goes everywhere. When I, uh, you know, when I take it out to church or I'm studying or whatever, of course I carry it in my hand. There have been times when I'm not carrying my backpack and I can stick this in my back pocket. I, I am a bigger guy or whatever, so... Um, or I'm a full-size male, I should say. So this fits in my back pocket flat, uh, just like this. My, I guess maybe the pants that I wear, the back pockets are big. But you can fold it, which a lot of people are like, ah, don't, don't do that. Um, you can fold it and stick it in it. And I do that sometimes too. But you can see that has not caused a ton of wear and tear. Um, so as far as crash test reviews, just simply what does it look like? Um, very little wear. And it, it gets used... Uh, it gets taken everywhere. It gets used four or five days out of the week because when I study at home, which um, I'd lie if I said it was every single day for six hours a day, uh, but but most days, uh, four or five days out of the week for sure, I'm I'm studying the Bible for for an hour or so, whatever. Um, this is also out. The the two of them go together. All the markings uh, inside my Bibles are the same. I have a little system back here. We'll go through that in a minute. Um, but all the markings are the same in the margins. Let me flip to a, a book that I just recently studied. Um, I went through Colossians. And so all the underlines, all the highlights, all the uh, little markings in the side uh, are the same in both Bibles. The only difference is I can't actually write in the margin here, but I have kind of a system for that too. Um, so this is truly my sword. Um, it, I, I, I wanted them that, that way so I can study and have them both in the same place. But I didn't want a Bible that just didn't have any writings in it because there's not a whole lot of margin space. And I'm not going to lie, my memory is not the best. So I need to jot down little notes for myself to remind myself verses and how to use them. Um, I study and work with apologetics a lot. And... Uh, and I, I just want to know truly what's in here, uh, be, be theologically, her hermeneutically, and exegetically correct when I'm speaking of this text uh, and do my best job to represent it well. So I take notes and write my notes down. So here we go. Uh, quick little review because, again, nothing much has gone wrong. You can see that it almost looks brand new. It feels a little more loose. And, of course, I've been using it for two years, so I can flip through the pages a little bit easier. 
Um, but what I've added is I keep these little sticky tabs. These ones are little ones. Uh, I, I don't use them a ton, but they're here if I need them. This stuff I use a bunch. I just went and got like a double sized uh, sticky note and I put a handful of them in here when I need more, when they run out. But this keeps me from writing. I don't ever write in my Bible on the fly. The reason that I don't do that is because not everybody I hear preach preaches accurately. <laughs> so I'm not going to take a bunch of notes on what somebody else says until I go home and study it myself. And then I, I add the notes and make sure that it, it's legit. So I'll take little notes in here as I go. And so I always have no paper just in case. Uh, the ribbons, since we're, since I'm flipping and noticing them, the ribbons, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I love my Cambridge Bible. The ribbons on Cambridge Bibles are horrible. Um, <laughs> they, they're, they're kind of skimpy and little and they fold and, and get not damaged cause they're not broken or fraying or anything like that, but they just get wrinkled up really super easy. I have a Skylar Bible that this doesn't happen on. Um, actually my wide margin, the ribbons were put in the Bible like incorrectly there and Cambridge just didn't do anything about that. Uh, I emailed them and asked them, Hey, they said, yeah, sorry, you're out of luck. So anyway, all the standard information, you can watch the review on the Bible, um, but we'll just open up to a couple of places. You can see how the pages look. There is one little section back here, if I can even find it, that a bunch of, it's right here, it's, it's hard to tell. You might be able to tell from the side. See how the pages are all crimped right there? In the corner, that whatever, I, I jammed it in my backpack and they got folded up. So I just unfolded them and laid them down. And you can probably see it here with the shadows, but it doesn't bother me, it doesn't look all that bad. Um, I've added a few things. So if I study a book, uh, first of all, I use this. I got some of these ideas. If you guys watch Matthew Everhard, I, I got some of these ideas from him. So go watch his channel. He does tons of reviews and is a super smart guy. Um, so some of these are borrowed, but everywhere this Bible goes, uh, that's of significance or significant events in my really family and spiritual life. I write down. But um, when, before I study a book, I study books at a time. My preachers preach books at a time. The pastors that I listen to are at my church. Um, so before I study a book, I do my best to get as much information on that book as I can. Um, so I, most of my studying is done when I take notes on the computer because I can take copious notes. And I have a video on that. I'll try to put it down in the description. But one thing I want to have is an overview of the book. And this Bible does not have an overview of the book. It's just, the book just starts. Um, so I want reminders. I want to be, again, be accurate and in the theme, when, it, when it's the date that it's written, who wrote it, um, and some of the breakdowns. So I give them, I write myself little teeny miniature overview pages. And the books that I study, I just stick them right here in the back. Just, just to have access to. Um... And then I have a little symbol chart since there is so little, so little room in there. Um, I make myself little symbols to access and different highlight color reasons. Um, and then I took these little teeny, these little teeny post-its, as you can see, and major themes that I might want to refer to, such as forgiveness, uh, sections of the Bible that have to do with repentance, sola scripture. Like I, I write all that stuff down. So if I'm in a conversation with somebody who's bringing up, let's say, false teachers, things that come up with me a lot, <laughs> false teachers, um, Mariology, I, I, I chat with a lot of Roman Catholics, um, and, uh, defending the truth of scripture. I want to have these verses at my hand and just in case I can't rattle them all off. A lot of them I know, but I have them right here that I can refer to. I, I don't think that there's a problem with me pulling out a Bible and referring to a post-it note because I have some uh, verses already right here. And then I go to it and it'll have some markings or underlinings on it. So that's kind of how I use this Bible for the last couple of years. And then if this fills up or I need another one, I just take a blank one or take this one off and stick a new one on. Um, I don't have a problem writing in my Bible, but there's not always enough space. So let's look at um, the last book, full book that I completed a month or so ago. My church also happens to be going through it. Um, what writing in the Bible looks like. And it's hard 
to get a real good super uh, through a video. But I do highlight. And there's highlighting on the other on the back page, so I'll show you. I'll try to show you the non-ghosting. <laughs> and it's it's hard via video, but you can't see highlighting through there. Um, I'll put the page down. All you can see is the actual highlight. So that's uh, honestly a real quick look at, at almost two years in the uh, Cambridge ESV Pit Minion edition that goes with me everywhere. I write only with, you saw some of the writing in there, I write only with Micron Pigma um, 005 black ink pens. Just for reference, um, I don't write with regular ballpoint pens. To be honest, I'm, I'm afraid of tearing through the page because I can get a little aggressive, I guess. <laughs> um, but uh, but that's a quick look at it. That's a quick look at, at, the, at what two years in the life of an ESV pit minion looks like that gets carried everywhere, taken out um, all, just about daily, if not daily, and used. Uh, it has held up really, really well. Um, I am not a pastor. I am not a preacher, I, so I, and the reason that I say those things is because if you're one of those, you might be in this thing for eight hours a day, and that might look a little different. You, um, again, go over to Matthew Everhard's channel and take a look at some of his reviews. Uh, he is a pastor, and he can show you what it looks like for somebody who's in this thing constantly. Um, but for just a, a relatively ordinary guy who studies on his own quite a bit, but I'm not a pastor. I'm not preaching out of this. Uh, I'm not taking it on crazy mission trips and into hospital. It just, it lives in my backpack. It goes wherever I go. Um, I go to San Diego, it goes to San Diego. I go to the beach, it goes to the beach. Um, it, it's held up very well. I think you'll, you'll, be, uh, you'll be happy to have it. Um, this is the goat skin leather. I did recently buy my wife this exact same Bible, but in the brown calf split. And she's only had it for a month or two um, because it's just the perfect size for us or for her. Um, and so we'll see how the calf split, if that changes in the next year or so, how it holds up. But man, this thing looks almost brand new. If I put it in the box, it didn't have writing in it. If I put it in the box, you wouldn't know. Uh, so I hope this has helped you out. If you have any questions, please, uh, or questions or comments, leave them down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe. And if you're looking for other Bibles that you want reviewed, let me know. Maybe I can find one to review for you.